Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday update recorded on the 12th of March. Let's get into the forecast. There's a fair bit going on on the map, although the high pressure zones coming out of Australia, they are the most dominant force at the moment. But plenty of low pressure south of the country and out to our east as well. And between that low pressure system stuck between uh, Banks Peninsula and the Chatham Islands and the incoming high out of Tasmania, that's producing this windy southerly that is especially windy around Cook Strait, basically from Banks Peninsula up to the lower North Island. But right through Cook Strait, you've got that strong gale force south to southeasterly wind going through. So that's why temperatures are down in many places today compared to where they were yesterday, and also fairly cloudy if it's not uh, wet weather in your region. But the high is on its way in, and that means we've got more dry weather on the way, apart from the showery weather we're seeing today. So here is the seven day departure from normal, brought to you by resupply.co.nz. A big thanks to them for sponsoring our videos at the moment. Uh, look at the dry weather across the country. So the pink and the red means conditions are drier than usual for this time of the year, for rainfall for this time of the year, and much of the Tasman Sea drier than usual as well. You can see rain around Fiordland uh, and the southwestern corner of the South Island, wet weather obviously south of Australia, that's moving along from west to east. And so that's producing a bit of rain relief in some areas, but generally speaking, dry. And we've got a special map to show you today going out for two weeks uh, at the end of the forecast. It's something I want to kind of explain about what is happening at the moment. Uh, but look at Thursday morning, frost risks around the South Island, typical autumn kind of weather. Uh, we're seeing those lower temperatures mainly through the interior. Not a lot of main centres really affected by this, but you will see some very low temperatures tonight through these inland parts of the South Island. And obviously surrounding all of that, it will be colder, uh, a little bit still windy in the North Island. That's why you're not seeing the frost there. One o'clock on Thursday, in comes the high. So the winds fall apart. The low out here to the east is also falling apart. A couple of showers around, bit of cloud around, not much else. Those winds are easing back uh, and the wet, wet weather that was moving up the eastern side pretty much falls apart by the time we go into Thursday. And by Friday, we're back into the high pressure zone. This big picture map quite clearly shows the three different layers in the southern hemisphere at the moment of weather. In the tropics, you've got all the showers and thunderstorms easterly direction. Then you've got the high pressure belt in the middle, lighter winds coming from the Indian Ocean across to the east, and obviously New Zealand, southern parts of Australia are being affected by that. And then the third layer is down here over the southern ocean, the westerly winds blowing along, a sign of autumn when you start to see those railroad tracks, the big uh, windy westerlies blowing along, and they are going to surge up into the country as we go into the weekend. A couple of showers here around the top of the North Island on Friday, otherwise light winds, settled skies right across New Zealand. So this weekend, Eagle-eyed viewers would have noticed yesterday, oops, Saturday didn't appear, uh, and you'll see why, because, um, see why I didn't notice it, was because Saturday and Sunday look remarkably similar for New Zealand's weather. Um, it was a little glitch in our system yesterday, so apologies for that, but here is Saturday's weather. Westerly winds are picking up, so you'll have west to northwest winds, depending on where you are. A couple of showers may remain around the top of the country, one or two isolated showers. You know, it's mostly dry, underneath high pressure, and the further south you go, you'll notice those westerly winds starting to pick up on Saturday. Let's jump to Sunday, and you'll see why we didn't really notice yesterday that we forgot to, to show you Saturday. Uh, very similar looking weather map, still mostly dry around New Zealand, still have those westerly winds. Now those west to northwest winds, they're picking up a little bit, and that's thanks to the surge of heat and Norwest is coming out of Australia on the back end of this enormous high pressure belt well out to our east. And then all that low pressure down around the Southern Ocean, big cold front coming into Australia with big thunderstorms for them, uh, but we won't really be affected by that other than a few showers over in Westland. And look at next week, again, very similar, except the really windy weather kicks in. So Sunday night going into Monday, severe gales or at least gale force winds are possible around exposed parts of the South Island and through the Cook Strait area. The further up the country you go, the lighter the winds are, bit of morning cloud and fog here and there, then afternoon, sunny, warm, in fact, quite hot. You've got the subtropical winds coming through here on Monday for you. So that adds a little bit more into the temperatures. Here we go to Tuesday, big picture again, showing you once more this uh, easterly flow with showers in the tropics, 
high pressure belt coming through the New Zealand area for the most part, but the autumn storms down here near Antarctica, you see some 957, very low air pressure, could be down to 940 hectopascals, very normal uh, for that to be happening right on the edges of Antarctica. But what we're seeing here is autumn storms south of us are growing, and that increases our chance of getting the windy westerlies as these high pressure belts are expected to slowly shift a little further northwards, and that allows a bit of wet weather here. But now I want to show you the two week map. So this is two weeks from today. Uh, so here we are on Tuesday of next week. Let's now jump forward 14 days from today, Wednesday, March the 26th. Do you notice much difference? Because I certainly don't. This map looks remarkably similar to what we've got now, which means pretty much for the rest of the month of March, we are seeing a lot of high pressure coming out of the Indian Ocean, across the southern parts of Australia, and into New Zealand. And in the tropics, strong easterly winds blowing along there, that's sort of removing the chance of cyclones forming when the winds are brisk like that. Any cyclones are gonna be much further up towards the equator. Uh, low pressure system possible around Queensland and New South Wales. Not a cyclone, just a low pressure uh, zone there. But the high pressure belt here is enormous, up to the tropics, well south of New Zealand, but the, the width of it, you know, Basically the whole screen here is seeing high pressure in the middle part. There's a small bit here around Tasmania where it breaks. So I'm telling you all of this because we don't have much in the way of rain coming up over the next couple of weeks. This is basically being dominated by high pressure. So we may have to wait until April to get some real rain coming into the country. That doesn't mean we're completely dry, but as far as a big low coming through, not yet, not at this stage, but we will certainly keep you posted if anything changes. Well, that's all from me for today. We'll catch you again tomorrow, Thursday, with our next New Zealand update.